it's just it's been such a unique season uh, for for everybody and you know i think our focus and attention has been so much on the health and well-being of our players of our staff of our fans of, of the worldwide and you know I, I certainly hope i've always felt that but on august 10th i don't think that would have been the first thing that would come to my mind when asked how's the season been going so far it's just been so unique and i just give so much credit you know they say it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it certainly takes a full organization to produce baseball this season. We've had so many people behind the scenes who have done yeoman's work and being able to put us in a position to succeed this year. First time uh, head trainer at the major league level, Michael Salazar. First time bench coach, Mike Bell. Our medical directors, first time joining a major league baseball team. What a unique season for them to, to come on board. I think the thing that's been such a blessing is during the ramp up, we were so immersed in the protocols. It was a, really a total immersion program. Now we're allowed to talk about baseball again, turn our attention back on the field, and, and just the overwhelming joy that it brings us to watch baseball games night in and night out. Yeah, thank God for that. And uh, so that brings me to the next question. That is, is that Twins fans all know about Royce Lewis. They all know about Alex Kirilov. They all know about Trevor Larnock. But you've got a whole cupboard full of minor league players that you're trying to develop for the major league level. That's got to be very difficult for you right now because there's got to be some guys that aren't even playing baseball. Uh, Tim, it's an excellent point. You know, I think... Our attention, and rightfully so, has been so much on the major league level, although a lot of our protocols that Major League Baseball has negotiated with the union have been to address trying to play games uh, night in, night out at the major league level. But what happens to the minor leagues? The minor league season was effectively canceled this season. So we have a number of those prospects that you just referenced, a number of our upper tier guys are at CH field, CHS Field over in St. Paul. They're working with our coaching staff day in and day out. But for the guys who are not, uh, we pride ourselves in having individualized programs for each and every player throughout our whole organization we try to uh, aspire to help every every guy through the resources of coaching and stats and analytics uh, to be able to be the best version of themselves well how are they doing that when they're not being touched on a daily basis by the coaches and not able to play games on a regular basis a lot of our guys are going to fields and they're throwing to their fathers they're throwing to uh, their wives their girlfriends their significant others uh, they're trying to stay in shape they're they're sending videos to our coaching staff day in and day out we're trying to develop them as best we can we're blessed to have the fort myers facility we're hopeful that this offseason we'll be able to have a lot of advanced programming to help bridge that gap but one of the biggest challenges that we've had as a franchise is we have a number of players at the major league level who are going to matriculate to free agency this offseason we were hopeful that we were going to have some minor league players who are just ready to step in guys who maybe finished the year last year at double a or, or got a taste at triple a guys who may have been factoring in for us in a normal season the latter half of the season or a september call-ups guys that could have been poised to strike at the major league level in 2021 well now it's a little bit of a different hand to play since we're going to have those guys unfortunately maturing to free agency and not coupled with the guys who are having the opportunity to develop this year that will just make it that much more challenging as we enter the offseason for our planning for 2021 and beyond with that we're going to turn our attention to your major league ball club, the last four in a row. So they need a streak stopper, and you're going to turn the ball over to Randy Dobnik tonight. Now, Randy Dobnik appears to me to be the type of pitcher, maybe a bit of a throwback. And I know you guys are going to hand him some information about uh, the other team, but it appears to me that he doesn't care about those guys. He's going to be who he is, and that's the guy that's going to keep the ball down, throw the ball over the plate, put, make his fielders make plays behind him. You feel comfortable handing the ball to Randy Dobnik tonight? And what kind of guy do you think he really is? I, I, th I, th you know, I think you and Jack both hit on, on this guy. And I, I'm sure you guys had teammates like this. You'll talk about him pregame and during the game when Jack's on air. These guys who have ice water in their veins, they don't seem to be impacted whatsoever. Whether they're down big, they're up big, they just go out there and they battle. I, I think the, the two things that stand out to me about Randy are, yes, three things now they say it one is his ground ball rate is just exceptional uh this guy throws ball, bowling balls up there uh and guys just pound it into the ground as a result his his home run rate is extremely small it's, it's been a small sample size 43 innings in the big leagues but someone made the comment i think it was on your guys broadcast that in the first game that we played against giolito this year he tacked on more earned runs from our offense in his outing that that time than Randy has in his whole 43 innings in his career. That's a pretty remarkable statistic. And then lastly, you can't undersell the handlebar mustache. I mean, that, that's definitely <laughs> elevating his game when he's out there each and every time. If that doesn't say he doesn't care, I don't know what will. <laughs>
The mustache is just incredible. Thad, it's hard to believe that uh, the trade deadline quickly approaching during this crazy shortened season. Because the season is so short, has that had an impact on decisions that you will make uh, regarding the trade deadline? Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing point because, you know, we actually had our first trade deadline meeting internally the other day, and we're sitting at that point 15 games into a major league season and just seems ludicrous to be making decisions on that small of a sample. But the reality is you got to get ahead of the game if you want to improve your team. So th there's a few facets that you, you have to look at in this this unique season. One is just the need to just continue to add depth after depth. I mean, you just don't know when or if uh, you're going to be hit with with a setback health-wise. Uh, usually the health that we're concerned about are arm injuries, leg injuries, back injuries. But we're obviously a little bit more concerned this year about the pandemic and how that could strike a team. Uh, we want to be there in the playoffs. Another element that is so unique to this trade deadline is the notion that there will be eight teams in the American League who will play in the playoffs. And so... Uh, you want to get in, but once you get in, you want to excel. And so you, you really start talking about uh, the strength of seeding and, you know, how, how high you want to be up on that seeding chart and whether or not you can, you know, steal a few extra home games. I think what we've seen early in the season, it's just so much more comfortable for our players to be playing at home. You know, Tim referenced in his last question, he cited the four-game losing streak and you know, I, I can't pretend to be in the clubhouse with the guys. I don't have that, uh, that experience personally, but I have to believe being uh, away from their homes, sleeping in hotels, uh, the protocols dictate that they really get out of a lot of their normal routines on the road, and I'm sure Tim could attest to this, and so too could Jack. These guys are creatures of habit, and so the change on the road has really impacted them. So the more home games we can play, the more home games that we could uh, potentially play in the playoffs, I think the better. Uh, so we're going to be... We're going to be nimble. We're going to be flexible. And we're going to try to do whatever we can to add to the depth of our team uh, and also add some quality. It's, it's a great team up and down the line. We're very, very confident in this club. But if there's chances to improve it even further, we're going to, we're going to strike. Well, we look forward to all the moves that are made prior to that deadline. Thad Levine, thank you so much for your time. We know you're a busy guy, so we appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me on. <laughs>